Namaste to all. In this uh, video, we will see the next couple of shlokas of Esha Upanishad. This is my part five, I think. I made four videos before explaining the first eight shlokas of Esha Upanishad. The next three shlokas of Upanishad also appears in the last chapter of Ajur Veda, but only a little bit change in the sequence because Ajur Veda ninth mantra is not ninth shloka of Esha Upanishad. Ajur Veda's 12th mantra is 9th shloka of Esha Upanishad. So the 9th shloka of Esha Upanishad is Andantamaha pravishanti ye avidhyam upasate tato bhuya ivate tamo yavu vidhyayang ratah. Very simple shlokas, but we must understand the in depth meaning of this vidya and avidya. And I will try to explain to you what my acharya always explains. Vidya avidya in these shlokas means vidya means spiritual knowledge, Brahma vidya, and avidya means science knowledge. This is the meaning of vidya and avidya in these shlokas. So here the Rishi says, Andantamah pravishanti. Andaha. Andantamah means they enter pravishanti, they enter into darkness. Yo, whoever does this activity, they will enter into darkness. Which activity? Avidyam Upasate One who progress only in the science. One who progress only in the scientific knowledge. That means they work very hard, they study, they go to engineering college, they or go to medical college or go to arts and accounts and then they do CA engineering master's degree then go to work become scientist or go to business they earn money this is the scientific advancement they buy mobile phone house all those things which are needed for our life without having spiritual knowledge if somebody does only progress in scientific knowledge then the shloka says those people will enter the kingdom of darkness darkness means they will attain such yoni in the next births where they cannot at achieve they cannot obtain any knowledge and tato bhuya ivate tamo yavu vidhyayang rataha tato bhuya means more than this these people are anyway entering darkness but the other people who are having spiritual knowledge they will enter much more darkness area many people you know used to especially muslim brothers they used to write to me and the atheist people that see your Upanishad and your Veda says that one who grows spiritually will also enter darkness then what is the use of Vedas? Actually they are not understood the secret of the shloka. Yes the shloka indeed says Vidyayang Rataha one who is Rat in Vidya. Rat means one who is totally indulged only in the Vidya. That means spiritual knowledge leaving the scientific knowledge. Tato Bhuya Yivate Tamo they will enter into further darkness than the other people. That means if the, if the people who are in scientific adva advancement, they become dog or cat or lion in the next birth, these people who are in the spiritual knowledge, they will, they will become like a tree, they will be like a plant, etc. They will be further in the darkness. So, why the Rishi has said like this? In fact, this is a copy paste from Ajur Veda 40 by 12 mantra. The same shloka appears as 40 by 12 mantra in Ajur Veda. So why God has told this knowledge? Here we must understand, my Acharya explains, Vidyayang Rataha actually means you learn Vedas, you learn Upanishads, you learn different different Darshanas, Manusmriti etc. and you get into Ahankar. You get so much of ego that you start insulting people, you show your ego of knowledge to everybody that I only know everything, I know all the scriptures. So if you do like this, Vidyayang Rataha means this is the secret. When you do like this, then you will enter into darkness. You will enter into more darkness than those people who are atheist. Atheist people will always enter darkness, but more than them you will be suffering. Even after studying Vedas, you will be suffering because you are in ego, you are in ahankar. So my Acharya always says that Vidya Dadati Vinayam, one who is learned philosopher of Vedas, he will be Vinayam, he will be always submissive because he has not studied the books. 
for the sake of studying he has realized the knowledge in the samadhi so that means rishi says andan tamaha pravishanti ye avidyam rishi says when you progress in science you will enter darkness means should we leave the scientific progress should we not study engineering should we not study school should we not study medical science no the rishi indirectly means leaving the spirituality if you learn science only if you progress only in science leaving almighty god leaving acharya seva leaving the vedic dharma then this will be the problem so this is the inner meaning of this shloka and next shloka says anya devahur vidyaya anya dahur avidhyaya iti shushum dhiranam yena stad vich chakshire so the rishi is advising here that you have to go to dhiranam dhir purush when you go to dhir purush what will happen you understand that they are samadhi yogi dhir purush means samadhi yogi when you go once you go to samadhi yogi then if you listen the knowledge of the vedas then if you listen the knowledge of darshanas or upanishads what they will do anya deva they are devas they are rishi muni dhir purush their mind is firmly established in samadhi so they are called as deva they will not tell you the vidya and avidya like what normal people tell ahu hu means to tell to speak about vidya to speak about avidya they have a different perception they will say in such a manner that the result of vidya and avidya is something else so you must go to those dhir purusha to understand vidya and avidya means to understand materialism and spiritualism how to live materialistic life in the light of spirituality how to live spiritual life with the help of materialism can be understood only when you listen vedas from a dhir purusha so the rishi is advising please go to such a dhir purusha who will explain you everything about vidya and avidya and they don't say like what i told in the previous shloka science and spirituality they don't say like science and spirituality they will give you further insights to it so that is why anya devahu hu anya means kuch aur whatever you think normally they will not think like that whatever you understand from the world they will not understand like that they will give you an insight to the life they will give you an insight to scientific knowledge they will give an insight to spiritual knowledge because they themselves are knowledgeable people they are dhir purusha so always go to dhir purusha to understand vidya and avidya so then the rishi says vidyam cha avidyam cha yastad vedo bhayam sah avidyaya mrityum tirtva vidyayam ritam ashnute so now you after understanding the previous shloka when you go to a dhir purusha what they will teach is also written by rishi here and nobody can explain this shloka properly other than acharyas yogi who are dhir purusha even the book i am referring this is a book written by some scholar big really good scholar but he is not a yogi he has explained in four lines he has explained vidya tata avidya in dono ko jo ek sath jante hain ve avidya arthat bhautik vigyan science se mrityu lane wale pravahon को तर जाते हैं और विद्या अर्थात अध्यात्म ज्ञान से अमृत को चखते हैं बस दे हैव रिटर्न ओनली सो मच सो व्हाट ही सेज इज इफ यू गो टू धीर पुरुष दे विल टेल दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ साइंस ट्राई टू क्रॉस ओवर द डेथ दैट मींस यू कैन इंक्रीज योर लाइफ स्पैन यू कैन यू कैन ईट हेल्थी यू कैन ईट गुड सप्लीमेंट्स you can eat a lot of good medicines to save yourself and you can win over the death or you can try to increase your life span mrityu means death and similarly when they will teach you vidya you will amrut ko chakte hain so you can taste the nectar of amruta this is what he has written which is not the right right meaning the right meaning is very deep the right meaning is mayacharya says what is avidya avidya one of the meaning is to progress in materialism 
but the insight of avidya is what progress in materialism is anyway happening to all of us are we not materialist materialistically progress at least 99 percentage of you who are seeing my videos you have a house to stay you have a place to stay you have a little bit of decent income or your parents are earning or your husband is earning or you are earning whatever it is you are in a decent family you are having a good progress in materialism maybe you have issues of you know debt and other things but still you have progressed in materialism you have a mobile phone you have a good house at least you are, you are live in a rented house at least you are not staying on the roads for sure so you have progressed in science but the rishi does not mean that the rishi means avidya avidya does not mean only science here avidya also means the real avidya which my acharya explained in the yoga sutra jo nitya ko anitya ko nitya manta hai one which is not eternal something is not eternal we consider it as eternal number one this is avidya something which is jad non alive we consider it as alive this is avidya something which is impure we consider as purest this is avidya fourth one something which always gives you sadness or which always gives you pains and miseries we consider that they are giving us happiness they are giving us pleasure they are giving us bliss this is the real meaning of avidya so when you go to dhir purusha dhir purusha will not teach you how to make refrigerator how to make you a, make aeroplane this or how to make a mobile phone they will not teach you this it's not their business because they are dhir purush they are in samadhi of course they might get that knowledge from their deep meditation but they don't want to focus on that kind of scientific advancement they will teach you what is eternal what is non eternal they will teach you that your body you have taken birth that means you are not eternal when your body is not eternal so why you are focusing on your body you are considering you are focusing on your body because you consider your body to be eternal you consider even though you know that one day you will die until death you practice so hard to keep your body at to eternity instead of focusing who you are so that means you are feeding the body but you are not feeding you because you understand that your body is eternal not you whereas the reality is you are eternal your body is non eternal nitya anitya almighty god is eternal world is non eternal you are focused on the world not on the almighty god this kind of knowledge a rishi will give similarly mortal immortal body is mortal we have so much of attachment towards our body towards our family body if somebody dies we cry a lot we cry a lot we cannot let go of them why because we are considering mortal things to be immortal but you are immortal you don't know why because you have not come to a dhir purusha this kind of knowledge your rishi will give i'm not a rishi i'm just trying to give you what knowledge i have learned from my acharya similarly your body is totally impure your body has got tatti pishab means you have urine stools inside the body blood blood is flowing inside the body so many different different types of fluids are flowing inside the body the moment somebody dies keep the dead body in the house for one day you will start getting the smell because the body is totally impure so but if we consider our body so pure we want to make it further attractive without understanding that this sharir is with mal mutra this sharir is impure but we want the sharir to be pure we consider no 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 sharir is not impure i will put more scent to make it pure god says saaf sutra rakho every day take bath make keep it clean wear good clothes which are not you know stinking try to wash the clothes and wear it but do not try to make your body attractive because your body is made of mal mutra you have not made your body contains inside it's made of all the panchabhuta but it has lot of waste inside it but you ha- you are so much attracted towards your mortal body which is totally impure Cons- you consider that this body is pure there are so many you know in tamil in hindi also so many songs written on the body of the female the lover the the two people loving he says that you are your body is so pure i want to you know whatever it is because of avidya and then la- lastly you consider my acharya says whatever you do with your body whatever you do with your life 
end of the day you are again sad you are unable to get peace of mind why because you are in avidya you don't know what is giving you real pleasure what is giving you temporary pleasure all your bodily needs are satisfied for temporary in time but you are behind 100% effort is given for temporary pleasure you have left the eternal pleasure which is almighty god which we are in the state the dir purush my acharya says yogi has attained the bliss so he wants to give the knowledge of almighty god to you so that you can attain to bliss but you don't want that knowledge you don't want brahmacharya you want to do sensual pleasure you don't want to do tapasya you want to go to pomp and show enjoy dance liquor all those things you want to find pleasure in activities which will give you immediate satisfaction immediate pleasure because you are not aware that you are not the body so this is the real meaning of avidya when you understand avidya that you are not the body your body is mortal your body is non eternal we are behind the worldly sukh which is so so temporary one day it will anyway go off if we are since we are in avidya but the moment we get the knowledge this we know about avidya by getting vidya from acharya the shloka says avidyayam mrityum tirtva the moment you understand avidya you will not cry for death you will not fear death you will not cry for death of a close relative my acharya says this is not my state this is just a bookish knowledge i i may cry for my close people death i may feel bad for my close people death i don't know i have not yet experienced but one time will come which i will experience i will tell you that point of time but this is what is the shloka saying when you understand avidya through vidya through an acharya then you will cross the fear of death number 1 and because you have understood with avidya through vidya you will start worshiping almighty god you will start meditating on almighty god you will start contemplating who you are in reality you will start warding away this sensual pleasures slowly slowly you will focus more on your tapasya and slowly you will totally get into vidya totally get into knowledge and that knowledge will not be with ego and pride and ahankar that knowledge will be so humble to you you it will make you humble and with that knowledge with that vidya you will become a wise person and one point of time almighty god will manifest inside you avidyaya amritam amritam here means moksha the almighty god you will become samadhisth yogi with the help of the vidya of the acharya so when you do this then vidyayam amritam ashnute vidya will give you amrit vidya will give you moksha vidya means only vedas gita is not vidya upanishad is not vidya darshanas are not vidya quran bible any book is not vidya vidya only means vedas the knowledge of gita contains some knowledge i mean gita has 700 odd shlokas it has got little bit of vidya little bit of vedas knowledge in that i mean whatever is mentioned in gita is vedas knowledge but only few out of vast with knowledge in the vedas shri krishna has given so few knowledge in gita so gita is not complete brahma vidya similarly upanishads cannot give complete brahma vidya this shloka of upanishad itself is from vedas only so my acharya always says before samadhi i used to read all the upanishad i used to read darshanas ramayana etc etc but after samadhi automatically your mind turned towards vedas only because you realize vedas in samadhi you don't realize ramayana in samadhi you don't realize darshanas in samadhi you don't realize upanishads in samadhi you realize almighty god and vedas in samadhi and the, in the samadhi state people have written upanishads and darshana so listen upanishad darshanas in the light of vedas my acharya always says so then what happens vidyayam ritam ashnute amrit you will get moksha this is the step to attain moksha so concentrate on science and spiritualism in parallel number 1 is the learning in this loka number 1 number 2 understand how to utilize the world understand how to utilize science understand what is brahma vidya from a dhir purusha number 3 focus on what is avidya leave off whatever is avidya with the help of vidya with the help of tapasya sad vidya means sadhana vidya means yagya vidya means listening vedas vidya means serving acharya vidya means serving parents vidya means worshiping almighty god daily with the help of vidya overcome avidya for the moment you understand avidya you will overcome death fear of death and after some time continuing tapasya over a period of several janmas you will attain moksha 
this is the secret of these three shlokas similar shlokas the next three asambhuti sambhuti i'll try to explain in the next uh, you know part of ishapanishad thank you so much namaste om